the Dragon Reborn begins with Pedro Nile, commander of the Children of the Light, speaking with Jared Byer. He's looking at a drawing of the man that has proclaimed himself the Dragon Reborn. Byer is the only White Cloak that survived the Battle of Fama. He tells the commander that a thousand Children of the Light were killed by the Sanchan, who were aided by Aes Sedai in combat. He also tells him that a man named Perrin from the Two Rivers is to blame for what happened. A man named Ordis comes into the room and tells the commander that the false dragon's true name is Randall Thor and that he has two friends named Matt and Perrin and that they're all dark friends from the Two Rivers. Pedro Nile wonders if he needs to make plans for the Two Rivers. Perrin and a group of Shinarans are waiting for someone who's coming to see Moraine. When the person finally arrives, they notice that she is a woman and one of the Tuathorn. Her name is Leia and she's escorted to the camp of the Dragon Reborn. At the camp, Perrin asks Min what she sees around Leia and Min says that she sees Leia having a bloody death. Rand and Maureen have been constantly arguing over what to do about the people that are dying for him. There's battles and conflicts all around in his name since what happened in Falma. That night, Perrin has a dream and in it he dreams of a crystal sword floating in the air. This sword is called Kalendor. It is a Sangriel made during the Age of Legends and it can only be touched by the true Dragon Reborn. When Perrin wakes up the next day, the camp is under attack by Trollocs. Perrin remembers Min's viewing about Leia dying and rushes in to help her, but she is killed by a Merdral. Perrin goes into a rampage and kills the Merdral and lots of Trollocs. He also summons wolves to fight with him. At the end of the battle, Perrin tells Min that he couldn't save Leia. Min says that it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Perrin speaks with Rand, who is frustrated because when he tried to help in the fighting, he couldn't control the one power. All he could do was set fire to some trees. The next day, Land tells Perrin that Rand is gone. He left a note mentioning dreams he is having and that he's tired of people dying because of him. Moiraine asks Perrin about the dreams he is having and Perrin tells her about the floating crystal sword he has seen. Moiraine recognizes this as Kalendor. Lan says that other men in the camp have had the same dream. Moiraine figures out that Rand is heading to the Stone of Tear where Kalendor is being held. She says that in the prophecies of the dragon, it says that the Stone of Tear will not fall until the dragon holds Kalendor. Rand is trying to draw Kalendor to finally prove himself the Dragon Reborn. Moiraine sends the Shinarans to Gildan since they're in no condition to search for Rand after battling the Trollocs the day before. She also sends men to Tarbalan to send a message to the Amulet Seat and update her on their situation. Before Min leaves, she tells Perrin the new viewings she's had around him. An Aeolman in a cage, a Tuathorn with a sword, a falcon and a hawk perching on his shoulders and warns him that if he ever meets the most beautiful woman he has ever seen to run away from her. Perrin, Moraine, Lan and Loyal go in search of Rand. When they reach the town of Jara, they learn that strange things have been happening in town. A bunch of weddings happen in one day and when some white cloaks arrive in town, they behaved very oddly. Moraine knows that Rand has been here because these are most likely signs of Tiberian. Tiberian people are known for affecting chance. Later, a man asks Perrin and Moraine to help his brother Noam. Noam is locked up and has golden eyes just like Perrin, but unlike Perrin, Noam has completely turned into a wolf mentally and no humanity remains in him. When Moraine tries to heal him, she is unable to. Perrin tells the men to let his brother free because he knows that Noam is no longer a man. Perrin is scared that this will also be his fate. Moraine tells Perrin that she doesn't know much about Perrin's condition, but she does know that wolves live partially in the world of dreams. Dreams can be dangerous for Perrin because he can lose himself in them. The world of dreams 
also known as Telaranria, is a parallel world that reflects the real world. Things that happen in the world of dreams have direct effect in the real world. Everyone can access the world of dreams for a few seconds but only certain people can enter it directly, like Dreamwalkers and Wolf Brothers. On their journey to catch up to Rand, they notice that a lot of villages show signs of Rand's Tiverianess. In one village, for example, a man finds sacks of gold buried in his garden. When they arrive at a village called Remen, they find an Aeo man in a cage and kids throwing stones at him. At the inn, they find some hunters for the horn boasting about killing a group of Aeo and capturing one of them. Lan seems very skeptical about this. Perrin remembers that one of Min's viewings about him was an Aeo man in a cage and wonders what it means. He also notices a girl in a corner staring right at him. Perrin decides to free the Aeo man. The Aeo man introduces himself as Gaul and says that he is searching for he who comes with the dawn. Perrin knows that the man he is looking for is Rand, so he tells Gaul that he will find him in Tyr. Some White Cloaks notice that Gaul has escaped and they attack. Perrin and Gaul kill all of them. Gaul thanks Perrin for his help and then goes his own way. After seeing what Perrin did to the White Cloaks, Lan tells him to gather everyone because they need to leave right away. They board a boat and as they're leaving, they are joined by the same girl that was staring at Perrin back at the inn. She tells Perrin that she knows Lan is a warder in Moraine and Aes Sedai. She also knows what an Ogier is, which made her interested in Perrin because she wants to know why he is traveling with them. She also says that she is a hunter for the Horn and that by traveling with them, she believes they might lead her to the Horn of Valir. She introduces herself as Mandar, which Perrin finds funny because that's also the name of Lan's horse. So she decides to go by Fael, which she says means Falcon. Perrin almost falls down a ladder as he remembers that this is another of Min's viewings. At night, Perrin has a dream and Hopper appears. Hopper is the wolf that died attacking the White Cloaks in Book 1. Hopper wants Perrin to follow him. He takes Perrin to a meeting between Balsamon, some dark friends, and Lanfear. Perrin asks Hopper if what he sees is real, but Hopper doesn't give him a clear answer. He also sees Rand being hunted by Merdral and Dark Friends. Rand kills all of them with the one power and when he sees Perrin, he attacks him too. Perrin wakes up in pain and with burns on his chest. He tells Moraine about his dream, but Moraine doesn't know what to make of it. When they reach Ilion, they are attacked by Dark Hounds, which look like very large dogs and serve the Dark One. They are also very hard to kill. Moraine uses a forbidden weave called Bellfire to kill them. At the city of Tyr, Moraine gathers information and learns that the High Lord of Tyr is Belal, one of the Forsaken. She thinks Belal is planning on luring Rand in to take Kalendor and then take it for himself to kill Rand with it. Moraine thinks that she can kill the Forsaken if she can get close to him. They go back to the inn and Perrin finds Fael on the ground unconscious. Moraine tells Perrin that Fael fell for a trap that was meant for her and now she is trapped in the world of dreams. Moraine and Lan leave for the Stone of Tear and leave Perrin and Loyal behind to help Fael. Perrin goes into the world of dreams and meets Hopper. They both start searching for Fael and once they find her, Perrin is attacked by many falcons but he withstands the pain and frees Fael. When he awakens, Fael holds him and wipes the blood of his face. We switch over to Ewain, Nynaeve, Elaine, Matt, Baron, and Hirin. After they reach Tarbalan, Hirin immediately leaves. He goes back to Shinar to update his lord and king on what happened in Falma. Matt, who is looking worse, is taken to be healed from the Shadow Logo dagger. Ewain, Nynaeve, and Elaine are in big trouble after leaving the White Tower without permission. Varen gives the Armolin seed Swan Sancha the Horn of Valir and tells her that Matt blew the horn and now is bound to it. She also tells her what happened with the Sanchan and Randall Thor back in Falma. 
Ewain and even Elaine thought they would be praised for discovering that Leandrin is Black Kaja, but instead they are punished by making them work in the kitchens. The Amulin tells them that Leandrin ran away with 12 others and that they took several Terangriel with them. She also says that since Ewain and Elaine's skills have increased, they are to be raised to accept it. Elaine is told that her mother, Morghese, the Queen of Andor, is very angry with her disappearance and wanted to take her back to Camelin right away, but the Amelin managed to change her mind and told her that Elaine needs more time in the tower. Elaine agrees and says that she wants to be Aes Sedai. The Amerlin then gives Ewain and Nynaeve the task of uncovering the Black Kaja within the tower since she knows that neither of them are working with Leandrin and the Black Kaja. She also gives them special papers that allows them to essentially do whatever they want within the tower. The girls are later taken to the room where Matt is being healed. There's 10 Aes Sedai in the room, and with the help of a Terangriel, they combine their powers to heal Matt. During the healing, Matt speaks in the old tongue, and Ewain recognizes it as the battle cry of Manetheret. Later, Baron gives Ewain information on Leandrin and the other 12 Black Kaja that ran away and the Terangriels that they took. Varen also gives Ewain a Terangriel that will make it easier for her to enter the world of dreams since Ewain is most likely a dreamer. Varen also teaches Ewain about the world of dreams and tells her that she can use it as a tool to hunt the Black Kaja. Ewain and Elaine take their accepted test, which makes them go through their greatest fear from the past, present, and future. Both of them manage to pass it. Later, while looking at the possessions left behind by the Black Kaja, they find evidence that indicates that they left for Tyr. Ewain goes into the world of dreams to look for more clues, and when she concentrates on finding the Black Kaja, she is teleported to the Stone of Tyr, where she meets a servant named Sylvie. She sees a great crystal sword, and Sylvie tells Ewain that it is Kalendor the sword that is not a sword and only the true dragon can touch it. When she comes back, she tells Nynaeve and Elaine what she saw and they decide that they must go to Tyr, but Elaine must send a letter to her mother first so she doesn't think she ran away again. Nynaeve knows the perfect man for this mission. They speak to Matt and ask him if he can carry the letter to Elaine's mother in Camelin. Matt tells them that the Amorlin is keeping him in Tarbalan and he is not allowed to leave, but if they can fix that, he will gladly carry the letter. They give Matt one of the letters the Amorlin gave them with special permission. Matt accepts and goes on his way. Ewain, Nynaeve and Elaine leave for Tyr. On one of their stops, an Aeo, maiden of the spear by the name of Avienda, asks for their help in healing one of her companions. Maidens of the spear are Aeo warriors that are only composed of Aeo women. Nynaeve manages to heal Avienda's companion, and Avienda tells them that they are searching for he who comes with the dawn, who according to prophecy will be born with Aeo blood and take the Aeo out of the Trefold land. After they reach Tyr, they stay with the local Wisdom who helps them hire a local thief catcher named Julian Sandar. Julian manages to track down Leandrin and the other Black Aja. He says that they are guests of the High Lord of Tyr, but when Nynaeve, Ewain, and Elaine go back to the local Wisdom's house, they find Leandrin and the other Black Aja waiting for them. The girls are captured and taken to the Stone of Tyr. The third storyline is Matt. We go all the way back to when he woke up from being healed. His memory is all over the place. He only remembers parts of what happened after leaving the two rivers. But for some reason, he remembers himself commanding the Manetheran army during a battle. He realizes that he's in the White Tower and that he's being healed. 
Later, a woman that calls herself Celine speaks to man. She tries to place mistrust between him and the Aes Sedai by telling him that the Aes Sedai want to use him and that he will achieve glory but only if he doesn't trust him. After Celine leaves, the Amarlin comes to check on him. Matt wants to leave but she tells him that he needs to stay in the White Tower to make sure that all the evil from Shara Lokos has been removed from him and that the guards know who he is so he can't leave Tarbalan anyway. She tells him that since he's the one that blew the Horn of Valir, he's now tied to it until he dies. The horn will only work for him and for anyone else, it is just a horn. Matt leaves his room looking for a way out of Tarbalan. He speaks to a guard that tells him that they've been told that he's not allowed to leave. He comes upon Gawain and Galad, Elaine's brothers who are practicing with the warders. Matt bets them that he can beat both of them at the same time with the staff and Matt actually does it. Later, he gets a visit from Ewain, Nynaeve and Elaine. They ask him if he can carry a letter to Elaine's mother in Camelin. Matt tells them that he's not allowed to leave Tarbalan, but the girls give him a letter from the Amorlin seat that allows him to go, so he agrees. Matt wants to take a ship but doesn't have enough money, so he goes from tavern to tavern, gambling, and wins every single time. He wonders if the Aes Sedai or the Dagger did something to him to make him so lucky. After winning a fortune, he makes his way over to the docks. On his way there, he is attacked by an assassin. During the struggle, they both fall off a bridge and Matt lands on top of the assassin who dies with his own dagger on his heart. Matt is having an incredible amount of luck. He then decides he needs a rest and stops at an inn. At the inn, he sees a familiar face, Tom Marilyn. Matt notices that Tom is drunk and looks very sad. This is because Tom blames himself for the death of Dana. Matt manages to convince Tom to accompany him to Camelin and they board the first ship they see. After they land, they save the life of a woman named Aludra, who is a former member of the Illuminators Guild. She thanks them by giving them some fireworks, and Matt and Tom continue their journey into Camelin. Once they reach Camelin, Matt tries to deliver the letter, but a guard gives him a hard time and doesn't let him in into the Queen's Palace, so he looks for another way in and finds the same wall Rand used to get in. He overhears some men plotting to kill Elaine, Nynaeve and Ewain in Tyr. Matt is seen by a guard, but he manages to convince him to take him to the Queen and deliver the letter. Matt recognizes the Queen's advisor, whose name is Gabriel, as the man plotting to kill Elaine. Afterwards, Matt lets Tom know about the plot to kill Elaine and the girls, and they both agree to go to Tyr right away and save them. When they reach Tyr, Matt and Tom go into multiple inns looking for the assassin that Lord Gabriel sent. Tom has a cough that is getting worse and worse. After a while, Matt spots the assassin that he saw back in Camelin. Matt kills the assassin, but he tells Matt that he isn't the only one looking for the girls. Matt realizes that his luck works best at random and wants to keep looking for the girls at random ends, but Tom's cough is getting worse, so he takes him to the local Wisdom. The Wisdom tells him that she met two girls with accents like his. Matt realizes that she means Nynaeve and Ewain. The Wisdom tells him that the girls were taken to the Stone of Tear. Matt leaves Tom behind and goes to the rescue. He climbs up the roofs and looks for a way into the Stone of Tear, but finds himself surrounded by Aeolmen. He explains to them that he's only here to rescue his friends and the Aeol let him free and they go their own way. He also comes upon the thief catcher, Juilin, and they decide to team up. Matt uses the fireworks he got from Aludra and makes a hole in the wall to get in. They are attacked by the defenders of the stone, but Matt and Julian defeat them. They make their way over to the cells, and they manage to free Ewain, Nynaeve, and Elaine. We switch over to Randall Thor. Rand is in the Stone of Tear, walking towards Kalandor, with a smile on his face. He wants to once and for all 
prove if it truly is the Dragon Reborn or not. He finds a man waiting for him who encourages him to take Kalinor. He introduces himself as Belal. Rand fights Belal and is actually losing. As this is happening, the Aeo are also fighting the defenders of the stone. Moraine joins the fight and kills Belal with Belfire. Moraine tells Rand to take Kalendor since it is his birthright, but she is incapacitated by Balsamon who appears out of nowhere. Rand reaches for Kalendor and finally wields it with Kalendor. Rand's power drastically increases. Balsamon flees to the world of dreams, but Rand follows him. After a long battle, Rand plunges Kalendor into Balsamon's heart. Rand defeats Balsamon once again, but unlike the other two times, he actually finds his dead body. Back in the real world, Rand finds the Aeo and the defenders of the stone still engaged in battle. Rand, with Kalendor in his hand, orders them to stop and proclaims himself the Dragon Reborn. Both groups stop the fighting and kneel to the Dragon Reborn. The Aeo, having finally found he who comes with the dawn, revealed themselves as the people of the dragon. Everyone believes Balsamon is the Dark One, but Moraine does not believe the Dark One would leave a body behind. Balsamon is most likely Ishamael, another Forsaken, and this just another battle and far from the last.